And now it's time to delve into the Y files here, because we're one ahead of... Would you lot move in? Now, I need to be introduced to you, because my notes here have only got three first names. Bob? I, would you say something? Putting your hand up on radio is really irrelevant. Good evening. Good evening. <laughs> Peter? Good evening. And Hugh? No, Carl. Carl. Oh, yes, it's... <laughs> We've got the surname at the end now. Hugh, yeah. let me cry. <laughs> What's going on? <laughs> <laughs> the team works so very hard, but no, it, yeah, it, it doesn't yeah. show. No, no, it doesn't, it doesn't no. show. I don't want a pre preempt your explanation. We're talking reincarnation, and Peter and Bob, and Bob, you've got an amazing tale to tell. I don't know which one of you is going to start, so as I welcome you to Midlands Radio, off you go. Who's well, first? Let Bob start then. Oh, okay. Bob. Good evening. Um... Four years ago, we started uh, regressing Peter, hypnotically regressing him, mm. into possible former past lives. And he seemed to hone in on one particular life uh, that we stayed with for about four or five years. And we researched all the information he's given us from those sessions of hypnosis. And um, since then, his story and the evidence from the research that we've done has been featured in several magazines, a uh, couple of television shows, and now our second radio show. Are we talking reincarnation, regression, hypnotism, imagination, what? Uh, we're talking here, Peter, being hypnotised and regressed and giving us information from the 17th century to do with the English Civil War, mm -hmm. of which he had no prior knowledge, only the normal schooling knowledge that we all should have had <coughs> uh, and retained. Um, but then Peter was giving us information that took us months and months to research archives and we found he was correct on certain dates, names and places and events that he couldn't possibly have known. I still get the feeling we started month. six squares around the board game. On square one, why did you start doing all this? Because I was an amateur hypnotist and uh -huh. regression was my hobby and interest and we uh, had organised about four or five years ago for his daughter-in-law to be hypnotised to do this subject. And um, because she backed out at the last minute, Peter volunteered to step in, and it all stemmed from there. He went straight back to the English Civil Wars of the 17th century, mm. gave us the man's name, where he was working, the name of the village, the name of the church, um, battle scenes, um, a lost castle in Scotland that we found. And now, will you, uh, hang, help me with this one, because yes. it's always exciting stuff, this, isn't it? Just to us. Yeah, no, 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 the regression always brings out exciting stuff. Yes, yes, it, but you it, have it, to sift it. Yeah, but no, I mean, you, you very rarely go back to somebody who said, I seem to spend all my life sweeping carpets and, f you know, no, uh, you're, wa you're washing up. You're going into the syndrome that people say they're always uh, famous people. Well, of course, Peter wasn't famous, he was just an ordinary pipe man in Cromwell's army. Nothing famous about him. But people always say, oh, you yeah. were Mary, Queen of Scots, or yeah. anything like that. Peter wasn't. He wasn't anybody famous. But we've managed to find, we think we found the man, and we think we found where he's actually buried. So you found who Peter was? In your former life. Who was he, Peter? I was John Raphael, brought up on a farm in the village of Highland, in Nottinghamshire. And then when the uh, Civil War started, um, Royalist, uh, sorry, uh, Cromwellian troops came to the village and I was taken to fight. Now I was told if I didn't go with these people then I would be strung up from the nearest tree. So I went along with them. Now this came out of your hypnotic regret. All this information yes. comes out from under hypnosis. And you regression. went back through your life and That's you right. thought, where had I read this? Which films had I seen? Yeah. And you crossed all those off. Yes, because to be, to do that. I have never been interested in English history. No, I knew absolutely nothing about it before the hypnosis. So there's a lot of stuff you don't have to be interested in for it still no. to go into your subconscious. Yes. We have to sift all that. Yeah. How do you do that? Uh, by research. No, no, how do you sift out the fact that he perhaps didn't read it once, or hear it once, because or saw a picture once? How do you sift that? Well, we, we tended to hone in on the items that we had difficulty in researching through archives. If it was difficult to get the information, we knew he couldn't have read about it easily. He'd have had to have done the same research we've done. And we know he hasn't done that. It's taken us two or three years to find out little bits and pieces. I'll tell you one thing that convinces me about this. Mm. I don't think there are thousands of people who say, right, I'm going to hone up on a subject, then I'm going to find a regressionist and mm. really drop him in it yes. when he gets to a radio interview or a television. That's right. Because mm. if you think about it, the, 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 there isn't much profit in that. Well, we haven't made a profit, mm. no. We're no not you know what for, I mean? We're not in it for that anyway. No, no, I don't mean, don't take me the wrong way. No, I mean, no. there's nothing much in it. So you could con a hypnotist if you wanted to. Of course you could, yeah. Anybody could, because you can't do anything you don't want to under hypnotism. Right. Mm. But what is the point? To prove regression, well, the hypnotist already be believes in it. Yes, one presumes. Quite, quite, yes, mm. yes, indeed. So we got Carl, we got Bob, and we got Peter here tonight. Mm. Yes, Carl. I'm Carl. I'm, I'm basically the chief researcher for this project. I was the 
the world's um, the biggest, worst biggest skeptic, if you like, when we first started. No, no, sessions. you're talking to him. Oh, right. <laughs> um, but I went along with it after the first session of hypnosis. And then as we've got into the research after the second session, and Peter's, the information that Peter gives on the hypnosis, when we do the research and we find out that he is correct and history books and archaeologists and certain scientists are wrong, but Peter is right and he can prove they're wrong, even to, this, to the situation where we take him, or he takes us rather, to a campsite in Scotland that he said was a Cromwellian base for 12 months. It's actually in Scotland. The local historians, archaeologists, local museums don't, didn't know at this time that this place existed. What, Cromwell had gone that far north into Oh Scotland. yes, they were into Scotland, they were uh, oh, rampaging yes. all through the borders region, right. uh, near to Kelso. Has so that border has been a movable right. feast that's over right. the years? Oh yes, yeah. Yeah. Um, and in this one particular location, which is just a, a small um, ravine if you like, Peter insisted that there were over 500 troops that used it as a base for over 12 Can months. I just stop you here, because uh, I'd like some input on this from callers, 03450 what do you reckon? we're talking about and if there's if there's any other members of Cromwell's army well in fact if Cromwell was listening at the moment <laughs> oh, <they were> nice, <laughs> yeah. or Lady Chatterley please call <laughs> us on 0345 I've got to make a joke about it because I think yeah. you need to keep it light yes, I want to yes. know about this here's a man called Peter before he found out what he was before he knew nothing about this exactly. now he's taking two people up over the border and pointing out somewhere where something happened yes. and proving it and proving it in ca on front With of a TV items. camera or something out of the ground. Items. What and have you got in your hand? You these put... are Civil War coins of Charles I, musket balls from the Civil War, all found in the very spot that Peter indicated, and they came up live on camera with a film camera crew. Can I have a look? Or yeah. am I not allowed to touch? No, you're allowed to okay. touch, yes. So these are coins yeah. of Charles I, yeah. found, uh, found under a tree that Peter pinpointed and said that the hit soldiers had been sitting under that tree. So we were sitting under there in a former life, we remember that, and, all the, and like it happens, your, your change falls out your breeches. That's okay. right. And, and we use a metal detector and we find the coins and then we find musket balls, buckles of the 17th century. Now if I said, now, if I was going to prove a story, mm. I'd turn up with some real positive evidence. Exactly. So well, what you do, you'd plant it. You'd when you the get night it before. Right, that's, that's right. The night before. Yes. What you do, when the film crew arrives, mm -hmm. the film crew decide where they want to film, not where you want them to film. Mm -hmm. We're talking of a big area. We couldn't We're possibly talking of 25 the acres, and the film crew picked where they wanted to detect. Now, we didn't detect. They got the local Scottish metal detecting club in to detect. We they insisted, insisted, them. We insisted we, but they we told assisted, them where assisted to go. Them, The trouble is the film crews, they want to go away with the film. Now, although they may want to debunk you lot and say, ha-ha, you don't know what you're talking about, mm -hmm. that's not a good film to put out. How oh, we took them up there, there were all three, three guys, you know, the Three Stooges, mm -hmm. you know, the, and the Marx Brothers, oh, yes, cool. and we make a fool of them. That's not good. What is good is success. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but now, what they do, you think, is... What, this what, is good, I mean, I'm impressed. What they actually find, what you actually find there, those are English Civil War coins, Charles I. Now, mm -hmm. this is in a field in Scotland. In other locations in that area, all you find is the Scottish coinage, not English. So it had to be English troops in that particular area. Right, now you go back to the professionals, the people yes. who do this all the time. They you say to them, look what we found, and they say? They say rubbish. It, they, yeah. they say there was no campsite in that area. Now they, they have, no have to say there is. They say we have no record of it. Because we proved it. If you have documentation or those, they say, well, you could have found those before and made the story up. So you Don't found something that wasn't documented. Exactly. Correct. Exactly. So you found something, so from your brain, yes. your mind, comes a, a, a geographical point. Yes, sir. You go, you dig, you do the physical stuff in front of a TV camera, oh, yes. then you dig it, dig it up, right? Live on of such stuff are dreams made. Yes. Then you go to the scientists who try and debunk, it, you down, debunk yeah. it. Yeah. And yeah. they couldn't do it. No, because no. we then take them to another site in Scotland, out at Air, where there is a derelict castle that was attacked in 1650... No, 1649. 1649. Sorry. You have to stand within oh, five yeah, Peter yards. Peter just corrected you there. Well, that's, that's well, he knows all the dates, you see. Um, <laughs> and Peter said on the hypnosis on one tape that this particular castle, at the back of the castle, it stands on the shores of a lock. And he said when it was attacked, the occupants of the castle escaped by running across the lock. Well, you can't run across a lot because it's about 100 feet deep. Yeah. Cor he said there was a corner. Well, unless it's owned by a water authority. Well, that's yes. right. Well, it can be dry by now. Well, well when we got there, we got the local uh, historians, local archaeologists, whose job it is to know all about that area. They are four miles away. They didn't know there was a causeway behind this castle. Peter showed them. And it was filmed on camera. We've and got the film crew standing on the causeway, which is 18 inches deep, 
at high water level. He knew it was there 300 miles away, and but the local people didn't. And 12 months before we actually arrived there, when he found the spot for us and told us where it was, having described it previously, 12 months before that, he'd called it by a name that doesn't exist today. When we researched in the archives, we found a two, three hundred year old map that was using the same name he'd given us 12 months previously. Peter, these two guys are talking about yeah. you. <laughs> you were talking, you under hypnosis, yeah. were talking about yourself yeah. as if you were somebody else. Yes. My experiences in a previous How's that life. feel? <laughs> it, well, it's strange, but I mean, we've, we've done about 12, 12 or 14 sessions now of hypnosis, and I, I'm, I'm quite used to it now, you know, I expect to keep coming out with fresh information, and I expect it to check out. Where's uh, the gold? That's what I want to know. Uh, well, we missed uh, it by uh, six months. We did. Yeah, we actually missed it. I'm, 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 I'm coming no, on the next one, because I, I saw the Brinks mat. Yeah, I watched it last night. Yes. Yes. And I'm coming with you for the gold. Well, Peter time. actually missed that, because in, in one of the sessions, he did talk about some uh, loot being buried that they'd uh, stolen from one of the houses they attacked, which was one of the things they used to do. Well, listen, I, I tell you something. Although you, you tend to come into a radio studio, yeah. and if you're expecting a journalist, forget it. If you're expecting a cynic, forget it, because I want to believe. Yeah. But I'm going to say, I think that if you can hand the genes down through yes. the years... You're talking of inherited memory. Yes. There's, there's something else you can... I don't know if it's memory. It has to be... Well, I don't, it, well, it could be experience. It could be... It could, it could just be map references. I don't know. But there's got to be something, because there's too many of these cases coming around at the yes, moment. Quite. Now, what are the debunkers saying to you as the, as the hypnotist, Bob? What are they saying to you that you, you are just... You're getting something wrong, but you're making a lot of it. What is it? I want to know what the debunking argument is. Well, the main is. thing debunkers say is, is, first of all, reincarnation can't happen. It isn't possible. They don't believe it can happen. They say it's illogical to happen in this day and age. Mm. But less than three centuries ago, people on this earth believed that the earth was flat. They had changed That's a spurious way. argument, though, isn't it? That's no, not, no, no. Just because some people got one that, that they were wrong. No, we know that. Yes, we're trying I'm to prove these sceptics wrong. Indeed, but what you can't use is somebody else's wrong argument to prove your all argument right. right. So what well, proof... Right, first of all, they say to me, well, prove what you're trying to show me here, what you're trying to prove. And I say, well, you tell me what you want to see as proof. Mm. What are they looking for? Genetic fingerprinting? We're showing them what we can find. How, what else do they want? Well, they may say that's happenstance or coincidence. Oh, yeah. We've had so many coincidences then that this... <laughs> our lives built on coincidences. Yes, yes, you know. I, th I think after three you coincidences... You can't have too many. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. No, you can have too many. Yeah, and they, no, well, then, well, they stop being coincidences Well, that's then. true, yes. What about... And they become logic then after that. Right. Now, what about... I mean, I mentioned it earlier. Where is the pot of gold? You could really, if you wanted to, go back and you could find something yes. that could make you lot. Uh, the envy of lottery winners. Yes. Why we, haven't you found that? But he did we, we missed that. it by six we months. We missed it by six months. Oh, I thought he, he did actually tell us no, where it was buried. True. He did actually tell us where it was buried. The exact location. And we organised. Yeah, and we organised to go up and, and search. We searched with metal detectors. And we got the landowner's permission at that time, and we went there. And before we arrived, or just as we arrived, we noticed that a hoard of Civil War coinage, gold as well, mm. had been found six months previously in the very spot that Peter had indicated. Of course, that would be crossed off everybody's list to say yeah. you're just saying we're making it up. You're yeah, making it up now yes, that's that's right. because yeah. you can copy the audio. Do tapes you have your tapes. documentation of these beautiful coins here? These bottles, these musket. And I dread to think what that is. Is that a ring? We think it's part of a, a pair of scissors. Oh, yes, it would. Oh, that's very good. And they were silvered. Yes. In fact, it does say Astor on Very tight. <laughs> <joke. laughs> that's a joke. That's a joke. Um, but you've got those, so you've worked that out. Those are just a small fraction of the amount of stuff we have. Found. We've got hundreds of them. I never a few. What are the museums are saying? Are the museums saying we haven't got any of that? We've never seen it. If you showed these to the museums, though, they were similar. Like they're 17th century musket balls. We've got hundreds of them. Yeah. Finding the musket ball itself isn't important because you can find them all over the country. It was finding them in the spot Peter indicated. That's right. Important. That's that. That's, that's the, the metal. Work. That's the stuff. The metal yeah. detect. Then you come down to documentation. And, and what about the lost? Fort. Oh, again, the, uh, he told people that it had been called Lock Martin or Fort Martin. That name hadn't been used for over 200 years, and it took us 12 months to research that in the archives in air. Even the archaeologists and uh, archivists in the air museum didn't know it had been called by the name Peter gave us. But we this is fact. Was right. Have we all got this somewhere hidden in us? Uh, filing if you believe in reincarnation, yes. Yeah. No, no, hang on. We might not believe in it, but we t if it's true, we've got yes, it. We've yeah, got, got it. it. That's yeah. right. That's doesn't right. matter whether we believe in yes, it. Yeah. If it's true, we've got it. Yeah. That's right. Well, if reincarnation is a fact, then yes, we have all got, yeah, I've all got it. Yeah. How do we find out? By being regressed. Mm. But I'm very busy, so you have to get in the queue. <laughs> no, the trouble is, <laughs> the tr this is what worries me. 
you are busy. Yes. What about, I trust you. Ah, right, yes. What about the people I don't trust? Ah, you must go what to about the people asking me for 50 quid up front? Yes. Uh, you go to one you can trust. Bob's never charged oh. a penny. No, 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 no you're not no, saying. No. Bob won't, because mm -hmm. Bob's the, the hit I'm, I'm going to. to. Yeah, He's the one I'm going to. Yeah. But what about the other people who will suddenly be told that uh, Mr. Hypnotherapist, who's opened up a shop in the high street after, you know, three weeks in the Liverpool College, uh, suddenly can regress you and find yes. out that you were Caligula, Caligula and had quite a good time. That's right. How do we trust them? I, I, right. I think it, it, you have to go by word of mouth, don't you? Recommendation, like in most uh, trades that you want these, or most services that you want. And prior results. Prior results. Prior results. And... Uh, and back to Peter, um, were you married in that former life? I was married when I got back after the Civil War. Mm, yeah? yeah? And are you married in this life? Yes, I'm married in this life. Yeah. Well, there's a triumph of hope over it. He's, he's, also, <laughs> he's also met his daughter yeah. from a previous life. Oh from this previous God, life. really? She, yes. lives in, she lives in London at the moment. I'll yeah. await the court That's case. Yes, I've just mm. seen the photograph mm. of her. Mm. I'll await the court case. <laughs> 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 I tell you what, it could rearrange the bigamy laws in this, in this world, couldn't it? Absolutely. And it's could. uncanny with the daughter from his previous life because she's got information uh, which is identical to information that Peter's got, but that's never been published by us, and it's never been. She's never heard the original tapes until she's she got the same one. information. She saw us on telly one. Bob, what was I in a former life? Because I'd like to think I was a professional broadcaster. Because <laughs> <laughs> oh. in this life, I'm having problems. <laughs> God bless you, fellas. It's been absolutely fascinating. Will you do me a favour? Will you come back to me in six months' time, all right? Yes, and let's see how far this goes, because at the start of the search, this is so exciting. Of such stuff are dreams made. Thank you so very much, Carl. Thank you, Carl. Thank you, much. Thank you Bob. Thank and you. thank you, Peter, for the time being. Or John, yeah. John or yeah. Oliver, or <laughs> Tyrannosaurus Rex. Yeah.